Hello, this is Ham Donishman. Thank you for joining me for another session of Verisys video training. So today we are going to be talking about the input output module. Uh, this is another controller that we can add to the Verisys system and its capabilities are basic, very simple basic inputs and outputs uh, that could be configured and added to the system. There are several different examples I can use, but today we're going to be using uh, just an example of how to use the outputs and the inputs uh, of the controller to be able to control some simple lighting uh, zones. And that's what the example will be today. So the input-output module itself, uh, it is uh, a device that can be added to the system bus. So it can go basically right underneath the smart building hub or it could be joined on the same bus where the zone coordinator is or any, any of the single zone rooftops or the TECs uh, of the, uh, the topology of the Verisys system. So again, it's part of the system bus uh, of the Verisys topology. So I've already have logged in into my demo site. I have two IOM modules that are predefined here, and they've been addressed at 13 and 14. And as you can see, the dark blue again and up inside the box, I've spoken about this on other videos that I've uh, created, that when it is dark blue, that should be an indicator for you that this is a system bus device. And these are addressed at 13 and 14. So I'm going to pull up the, the outside uh, lighting controller. I just labeled it as that. It's not your typical outside, outside lighting controller. I'm just using a couple of the outputs and I've defined them as, uh, as basically my lighting uh, outputs of this device. So the first home page you will see is really all the inputs outputs that this controller can do. They are two uh, binary inputs uh, of the inputs and output and there are also two analog inputs and there are four binary outputs and they're already defined within within the controller. And what I mean by defined, that means the, the actual points themselves are, are there. Now what you want to do with them is up to you from a configuration of the device. So today I'm, I'm just looking at a binary input. I'm going to have a binary input uh, from a photo cell perspective. And that binary input is going to be activated and we're going to, we're going to drive it to four different binary outputs from, let's say, four different uh, lighting zones. So really from from perspective of uh, configuration, the outputs here are pretty straightforward. You would come in here and uh, you could uh, change, you could physically command those outputs from here if you like. You could actually turn them on and off. And uh, or uh, if I basically say set state, I could come in here and change it to on if I need to. Uh, but this screen also gives you capability to put a description behind it. So you do have outside light zone one, two, three, and four, and that's what I've done here. On the inputs itself, uh, I've taken the first binary input and I've changed it to outside photo cell. That's really all I've done here from from the perspective of configuring the system. Now I don't have any more analogs or I don't have any more uh, other types of configuration that I have to do, but let's say that my photo cell was actually an analog, not a binary input. So I go back into my configuration. I have two analog inputs here. I've already defined them as temperature and a light sensor. So you can come in here and take one of the analog inputs and as you can see, I have different configuration I could do with it. I can make it a temperature, I can make it a humidity, I can make it a CO2, or I can make it a light sensor. So it's the, the programming of that, all it is, is that we tell you that this is a 0 to 10 type of a analog input, and this is a, this is a, a 0 to 10 volts, and you just basically click on this light sensor as, as the configuration and then that becomes the configuration of that. 
So if I had uh, wired in a photo cell uh, with the analog input number four on my IOM module, that would be what I would use to be able to drive my outputs. Again, you have a second analog input here that you could use. Uh, you could also make it into a refrigeration uh, type of an input, so an analog input to be able to measure refrigerant, and then also pressure input number one, two, and three, so we could actually have three different pressure inputs based on the scaling. And all of that is ex ex explained in our documentation based on the scaling and the wiring diagrams of what you have to insert. <clears throat> so from, from a perspective of input-output module, it's pretty straightforward. This is what uh, you get. And so in this example right now, uh, I have uh, used my interlock capability, which is something I'll probably go ahead and cover right now. I've taken the first input here, and I've used the interlock. And I'm going to go ahead and pull up one of these interlocks. And I've taken the device, which is my outside lighting controller. This is the IOM module. I've taken the first input, which is the binary input. And I've told it if that's equal to true, and this is only at one condition, then I want to turn on my binary output one, turn it on when it's true, and turn it off when it's not true. That is my interlock capability back to my IOM module. So if this was a binary input type of a photocell, and if this input goes true, which means on, then then this these outputs all have an interlock associated with it, and they should come on. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, command this point uh, to on. I'm going to take it out of service, and this is just a show you what this thing can do and I hit it on and then all of these outputs just turned on so if this is, was an actual digital input through a photo cell that was wired into the uh, binary input number one of the IOM when that thing goes true all of my outputs which is all lighting outputs just turned on so it's just an example of what you can do with the uh, with the IOM module. The other parts of the IOM module that uh, you can also uh, take advantage of is which has to do with load shed and then global shutdown. And those will be covered under another video that uh, Rob Schnauer will be providing. This concludes my uh, video for today and I hope this was helpful and uh, hopefully you come back for more. Thank you very much.